Commission that came to join us today. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, Mark uh, uh, Aldernest, uh, who is the Executive uh, Secretary of the CGFAR, who really has been worked on agriculture innovation. What are the lessons learned? What uh, were really uh, important for uh, the member countries in terms of innovation? We're not uh, research, but we use a lot of what is produced into research. Mark, over to you. Thank you, Christina, and thank you for the opportunity to talk a little about the Global Forum on Agriculture Research and Innovation, which is hosted by FAO, which is a very important dimension for us. And this body is established essentially because of the reality of the complexity of agricultural innovation and how it can achieve impact in sustainable development. We've just heard, I think, some very good examples of the challenges the complexity of the SDGs, their interaction. And within that, there are big questions about who benefits from innovation, how can they benefit, how can we ensure that no one is left behind by advances in agricultural innovation, whether they're ICTs, genomics, uh, all sorts of different dimensions. But the reality is that our research and innovation systems worldwide are fragmented, they're under-resourced, they're disconnected from each other, and they're disconnecting science from society and the delivery of impact in the Sustainable Development Goals. And that's why GFAR is here, to really try and bring the oil that helps those pieces work together and the glue that binds them together towards a collective impact. And the EU's core financial support to GFAR and FAO's technical support and put linkage with the policy work of FAO has been fundamental to the achievements of this forum. And through that, GFAR has evolved radically over recent years. It's now a forum of over 600 organizations, more than 600 from all sectors, from 13 constituencies, public, private, and civil society. It's the only space in the world where innovation is being considered equitably, inclusively, by everybody feeling they have a fair voice. And they're there to make things work together, not to oppose each other. And the reality is that linear, historical linear models of research to extension to pharma just do not work when we're dealing with the complexities of the SDGs. We have to factor in a number of key elements. We have to really look at who's demanding innovation, not just from governments, not just from science, but from communities themselves. What kinds of innovations do they need to solve their own problems for themselves? Making innovation inclusive, bringing communities right into those processes, farmers as researchers, dealing with issues such as we heard last night, the orphan crops, the neglected species, the post-conflict crises, how do we rebuild? It requires communities at the center of these processes, not at the end of a chain. And that's what GFAR is doing, is it's repositioning the way we think about research and innovation. And obviously, any new tools, knowledge, technologies have to be adapted, localized, brought into a very risk-aware context of farmers and the changes they're making. And that's what we're doing, looking at new ways of embedding innovation in development. And it's not just about production. We really have to look at enterprise, opportunity, new opportunity, particularly for youth and women, and how we can create a new world for them. And clearly, no one organization can deliver these integrated actions by itself. It's common sense. We have to work together. And GFAR provides this collective movement for the change that we need to make. And it's certainly not that GFAR is a management, a program management agency. What we do is we catalyze change through the partners, through FAO, EFAD, CGIR, and on the grassroots level, hundreds of NGOs, public research, extension, education, etc., private sector. And that means that we're there to make things happen. And it needs action together to make these changes happen. And I think the EU, particularly even through its own nature, is very aware of the importance and value of collective action if we're really going to achieve change. And the EU has provided key central support to GFAR, recognizing the importance of multi-stakeholder action. And it works. We've just had an external review of GFAR, and the message that that team received over and over was if GFAR didn't exist, it would have to be created. 
It's doing what it's supposed to do. It, it's catalyzing transformative change in all sorts of areas of agri-food research and innovation. And they looked at the outcomes from 72 of these actions that have been promoted through the GFAR networks, through the GFAR partners. A quarter of those have gone right through to changing institutions themselves. And that's what's got to happen. It's not just about individual behaviors or program changes. It's about how do we change the very fabric and infrastructure of our institutions and how they work together. And the next plan being developed by the partners, by these 600 agencies, and which the EC is, I sincerely hope, is intending support through the DESIRA program, which also cross-links with all the FAO actions, the technical knowledge and capability of FAO, is building on this further, putting farmers at the center of innovation processes, putting the communities, the rural communities themselves, as drivers of their own futures and the technologies and innovations they need to get there. Opportunity and enterprise, cross-linking with the TAP SIDICE program, which is also EU-funded, which is developing national capabilities in agricultural innovation. Strengthening the institutional architecture. This is not a top-down process. This is an absolute grassroot bottom-up. We need strength at all levels. We need interactions. We need national innovation platforms where people are working together to solve their own problems. And these bodies need strengthening in themselves. Give farmers a voice that doesn't just happen. We have to help strengthen the farmers' organizations and bring them in to the dialogues and planning of innovation processes themselves. And that means also more collective advocacy. This forum has a tremendous voice amongst those millions of stakeholders involved in all those organizations, millions of people, in actually putting that on the world stage, getting it, the voices heard from the grassroots up to the global level. And the G-Card processes, which again the EC has been very supportive of, are one big part of that. Global dialogues based on local issues. So GFAR contributes with FEO as a multi-stakeholder think tank and a platform for mobilizing collective advocacy, advocacy, collective action. It's separate from, but it's highly complementary to the intergovernmental processes of FAO. And with the European support and the Rome-based agencies together, the value of networked actions that are catalyzed by GFAR and delivered through its partners are really coming to the fore. And we live in a very connected, very inter interdependent world. With this support, GFAR is really helping to break down the barriers and open out the silos that constrain innovation from achieving its impacts. And together we can reshape the future of agriculture and ensure that innovation delivers its essential role towards the United Nations Sustainable Development Agenda. Thank you.